Uh, okay, try now. Okay, how about now? Ah, flipping neck. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I should be working now. Are we all good? On. That's it. Oh my god. <laughs> I haven't changed nothing on OBS, but yet, for some reason, the mic output or input decided not to be on the snowball. It was just on nothing. Ah, uh, I was going to use StreamYard. That should teach me. Should we start again? Okay, I've got what I said now. Ah, hi everyone. Hi Tatsters, we should say. And Mike's over this side now. Been away for two days. I was on a video rampage. Gave you a day or two off. Uh, I was going to film one today, but I didn't get around to it. So I thought I'd get this little live together as the wife's doing a late shift today with her job at the hospital. Not that she works at the hospital, but um, got the evening free. Thought I'd get together 10 items that sell for £100 plus um, on eBay, basically. And then I said <laughs> I was going to reveal the winners maybe of the raffle who got the top prizes and also details of this Saturday because yeah we'll see something's happening on Saturday hopefully right if I get this get the comments up on here um, on eBay, let's pause my silly voice there we go okay I think that's the first time I've had the mic off live I haven't done that before first time for everything ah right I'm all out of sync now not out of sync. Anyway, first in was Peter Ray's Adventures. Hello, Peter. I did see you before I started this controversy. Um, Paul Calvert, morning. Where are you based, Paul? Um, it's obviously quarter past nine now. Knackered. Hey, Tori. Um, Adam, <laughs> no sound, no sound. <laughs> Where do we get to? Lots of people in. Uh, how many people are in? 68 watches. Ah, uh, right. Uh, Loopy Lass. Uh, good job, I just joined by the seams of it. Yeah. <laughs> Had a bit of a nightmare just then. So we can hear and see me okay. Cool, cool. Hopefully all my tabs are open okay in that. Because now people are in. Should we get to this? 10 sales that go. Or 10 items that go for 100 plus on eBay. Let's do the magic. Doosh. There we go. <laughs> so. Right. First item. We'll get crack, crack right into it. Oh yeah, and at the end. Oh, I said that. I can't remember what I said and not said. About Saturday. Reminder about fundraising. You know. Try and raise a bit more money. Because I was going to do a quiz. I haven't got time to do a quiz. And all that malarkey. Back onto the video. First one. I think I've mentioned these in my videos. Uh, I've picked up four of these. £25 each from my shoes boots man. All brand new. Solivair. Made in the same factory as Dr. Martin's at one point. I'm not sure if they still are now. So as you can see on the screen. Made in England. Always a good thing. Size 8. And obviously it's got all the model name and numbers and everything. Just a classic shoe really. Nothing too special apart from just being a classic, well-made shoe, basically. Um, yeah, it says eighty-nine ninety-nine here. I've actually sold two now, two or three. First one went for a hundred pound, ninety-nine ninety-nine. So there you go. Uh, there's my money back straight away, minus a little bit for fees and that, of course. And then obviously he sold the second lot for eighty-nine ninety-nine, and I done a ten percent sale. So um, yeah. I think I've already mentioned these. I'm repeating myself a bit. Um, I've just seen a question quickly from Tea Cakes. Uh, have you ever been to an auction viewing only to find the item you wanted to view was stolen? Happened to me. Well, you said a 30 mile trip. Oh, actually stolen from the auction. Um, no, I haven't heard of that. Obviously, things do go missing at auctions, but no, I haven't actually had that for me. <laughs> one of my mates came with me to an auction once and accidentally took something that wasn't his in a lot but that was an accident there was like binoculars and there was some sort of other binocular that wasn't in that lot but that was next to each other or something but um, 
<laughs> Paul Heathcote. So neither were above a hundred. Now, if we're being picky, actually with postage, it was over a hundred. <laughs> but it was ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, yeah, that's that one. Next one is not on the screen. Talking of auctions, this one was from my auction. If you caught the live viewing day, I took it round with my phone and that. Uh, there was sort of a couple of models of these. It was like a Mickey Mouse, like retro um, Disney telephone. And there's another um, Fantasia, is it called? When Mickey's a wizard. Uh, that's still for sale. But I got both of these. I think they were £20 plus commission each. So say, what, £23, £4 per item. And this one was up for 150 because it's brand new old stock, which always adds a premium. And uh, I don't know if this was actually in an offer or if I took an offer. Looks like I took an offer. Be yeah, £135 plus the postage, which is, I thought I was shooting for the stars really. But um, yeah, someone took it. I had loads of views, loads of watches straight away. I think my Facebook page actually helped with this sale because... Um, I think it sold quite quickly and I had a comment on there as well I think someone tagged someone on it like tag you can see if someone's tagged their friend or something and then that person matched up with the like receipt so that was quite cool little uh, benefit of having the Facebook page going so obviously if this was used you could probably take away that one with this You'd probably be getting like 30 35 if it was used but as soon as something's old and new never been used you can just push whack up that price and get strong money because where else are they going to go for it unless there is competition for new ones uh, dip in the chat again quick Natalie Deuce is that a uh, question George what did you do for a living before full-time reselling uh, the direct job before I started this full-time was a uh, full-time mum <laughs> Yeah, moved out, worked in River Island for two shifts, gave that in, and then I was working for a computer company for, what was that, three and a half years, that was full time, minimum wage, dead end job, hated it, but um, left that to then, Amy went full time, I then looked after the kids as they were getting uh, older, and as soon as the second one started school, I started this full time, which was, when was that, September 2016. I've been doing it full year, full time for three and a bit years now. Still going strong. All right, let's catch up. Da, da, da. That'll do. So yeah, there we go. Strong sale and the other ones to sell. Ah, oh, stop doing that. <laughs> Look at that. A familiar face, Dr. Martins. Again, that old but being brand new, adding the premium on. And it's the same again with these. These were... I think these were Royal Mail issued, uh, again from the Shoes Boots man, of course. Uh, every, as you can see here, Royal Mail, so these were issued to obviously a postman back in the 90s. I think I did actually get a date from them. I'll have a look in a second. But yeah, brand new with the tags. Nice Royal Mail, which adds like nice little detail there. Obviously quite rare to have the 90s ones with a cool old stamp. Even the laces weren't put on. Uh, this, and again, made in England, add another premium on. So this just ticked all the boxes. Um, there was a year on this, if I can find it. It might be in my description. No. Ah, uh, I thought it was a year. I think it was like 92 or something, 93. So I was only like two or three years old <laughs> when he was made. And yeah, there we go. So again, if these were used... They are made in England, so they'll probably still go for, what, uh, £70-ish. But nearly doubling the price just because they're brand new, never been worn before. Again, if someone wants them, where else are they going to go? There's going to be no competition to price up high. And if you're prepared to wait, you're going to get that big sale. But I think I mention these in every video, so <laughs> we won't drag on about Dr. Martins. Ah, here we go. Was this this week? Uh, in my picking orders video from Monday um, this was one of the items that hadn't been paid for yet and the three items that hadn't been paid for they've all three have been paid for which is really cool and this was one of them 
I've, I've had to write the prices down because for some it shows what they sold for and some what they didn't sell for. Obviously, I priced it for 150 this set of Harry Potters, and I got, I think it was uh, 130 took an offer. £130 plus the postage. Postage isn't free. <laughs> I actually had a message about these from a subscriber asking how did I get so much because there's like loads of sets and they're sort of like 30 40 pound and basically um uh all them cheaper ones they're all mixtures so some might be softback like paperback some are hardback some are adult covers mixed in with everything else it doesn't really make sense to me I don't really do that I have pure hardback um also another important thing to note uh I'll try and get one up I don't know if you can see, but they're all printed or published by Bloomsbury. There is ones by Ted Smart. You don't want them ones. They came after the Bloomsbury ones. So Bloomsbury is the proper edition you need. And they're the ones, obviously, collectors want. So again, yeah, uh, the first two are getting quite hard to find. I had to actually buy, uh, was it, I think it's the Flopper's Stone. I had to actually buy on eBay or, an app or Amazon, one of them, just to complete the set. Um, so yeah, all got the dust jackets. Obviously, make sure I've got dust jackets just to complete it. Condition overall was good. Uh, obviously, there's some fading. Obviously, you described that there's bumps and stuff. Then these two dirt cheap tales of Beedle the Bard and obviously Cursed Child, dirt cheap, but it just completes that set. It's all within the same world and everything. So yeah. Uh, so I don't know what this owes me. These probably owe me 50p to a pound each. Same with these. And I think I had to buy these last two. Uh, Fluffers' Stone was... What was that? £15 on its own. And then this one was like uh, £8. But yeah, 130 quid, And I've nearly completed another set. So if you want to get strong money, make sure it is a proper set. Don't be mixing stuff up because they will start dragging. And they won't be worth your time really. Unless you can sell them, obviously. Uh, yeah, there we go. Harry Potter bundle still going strong, and I've done it again. Oh, while we're here, here we go. Should we pop out the chat? So I forget that will be on the screen before we carry on. Hmm, I love cold tea, it's brilliant. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I'm really I'm rubbish with keeping up with the chat. Here we go, we got to here. <clears throat> Uh, not doing much. Best ever sale. Oh, three hundred fifty pound. A set of encyclopedia. There's one to look out for. Awesome sale, calf. Actually, while I'm here, who's actually coming to the Hitchin meetup? I'll be going as long as everything goes to plan. But I've I've got the uh, exclusive ticket, one of the tickets to get in, or virtual ticket. Names on the list. So if you are going, let us know or have a little chat in the chat. Chat in the chat. <laughs> Family friendly content here. Have a chat. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Move on. Uh, I knew I was too tired to do this. Uh, Peter A. Will you live stream from Skydive before you do it? I'll write that down because I'll get to Skydive stuff at the end. Because obviously people want to know what I've been selling. Um, I need to write it down otherwise I'll forget. Skydive. Live stream. There you go, big letters so I don't forget. Answer that at the end. Da, da, da. See if there's any questions. Um, uh, tea cakes. I have some kids, Dr. Martins, with Ladybird pattern. Still waiting for a bite. Yeah, that's why I don't bother really with kids' um, sizes. Uh, even with Dr. Martins, they get like, what, 12 to 15 pounds maybe? Plus postage, and even then you got to wait around. Um, what's my rule? Um, ladies, absolute minimum. Sometimes I leave them size free. Depends how good condition. If they're brand new, I'll pick them up. Maybe size fours to cut off for used Dr. Martins, like standard ones. And then men's. But then with Dr. Martins, they're sort of unisex, so that's okay. So four upwards, really. And then the bigger, the better, really. I think I've sold, or I've got... I've either got for sale or I've sold recently some size 14 or 13 Dr. Martins or similar boots. Uh, da, da, da. 
Oh no, I should have come in. Gave Harry Potter books to the charity shop last year during a tidy out. Well, they hardback Bloomsbury ones. If they're paperbacks, I won't worry about that too much. Uh, I would get coming in for Hitchin. Andrew's going, of course. Uh, Cheryl's going. Three hour drive. How far away is Hitchin? I went to last year's one. It took about an hour and 20, I think. And that was with a bit of traffic as well through Harlow for me. Uh, joined the party too late. Uh, who else is going? I'll go to the next one. I'm going. John at YLM. Cool, cool. Da -da -da -da. Leon, how your videos are giving me confidence to ask for more. Yep, never be afraid to price high because you can always bring the price down. You can't put the price up because it obviously goes too quick. <laughs> Get used to drinking cold tea. Yeah. Uh, we'll crack on now to see if there's anything else. What's the most I'd pay for Dr. Martins? I'll answer this one, then we'll carry on. How much would I pay? Good question. All depends on condition, where they're made, uh, if they're new or not. Uh, <laughs> hard question, depends what mood I'm in. Uh, the ones I sold, I think I got rid of them now, but them brand new ones, obviously they went for, what did they go for, 125. So really, even if you had to pay 50 quid, I paid, what did I pay? I had to pay 30. So even if I had to pay double that, 60. Really, you shouldn't really say no to a £125 quick sale. So even after fees, you're still making 40 odd quid, 50 quid. Are you really going to say no to that? Only if you can afford it though. Uh, yeah, all depends really. Bog standard used ones, maybe 25, 30 is probably my maximum. And yeah, there we go. Right, I'm getting distracted now. Back to the sales. Another £100 one with the postage, you picky bugger, <laughs> is these USD. Uh, I don't know if that's a number or just XIV. Classic throne, aggressive inline skates. Obviously, there's the Canadian name that I always mention, Bauer. But it's not just them. You need to basically when I lifted these up, I could tell they were going to be expensive. Just they were really sturdy, nicely made. I think they were also made in America. Uh, if I put it here, normally put it if it does. Um, inline skates. No, I think they were made in America, but don't hold me to that. But I normally, obviously, again, well made and everything. Not cheap to make. Um, yeah, basically came with the adjusting thing. Because obviously if you want to change your <laughs> change your tyres, change your wheels. There's that there, nice bag to go with it. And the overall condition was like really good, I think. Um, I did take lots of pictures. That's hardly a mark on them from what I can remember. Normally, when people sort of grind on rails and stuff, or on curbs, obviously it gets really scratched up, but these were like really good. I uh, can't remember what I paid now, it was in the video. £15, I think, off the top of my head, maybe £12. £100, took a couple of months, I think, but they've gone out the door now. And yeah, uh, but then with skates, you've got to be careful, because some can look nice but then be worth not much like 15 18 pounds which sounds all right but when they're big and heavy let's turn that one off when they're big and heavy they take up a lot of space as well um for like footwear so just do a little bit of research and get to know your brands basically uh oh jones just mentioned uh, about yeah i paid 35 pounds didn't i for the green pair and that was used, but they were made in England. Uh, are these? No, they didn't sell for 100, so they're not on this list. But I did, obviously, in my sales pickup video on Monday. So yeah, maybe I'll pay a bit more then, if they're made in England. Next. Uh, that's a big sale. I'll oh, we'll go with this one first. This is a cool sale. I didn't video this boot sale. I, was, I think I did, or did I? I can't remember. I was with my brother-in-law, Jack, because uh, he helped me carry it back to the car. So I had my hands full this day. Uh, basically, it's not official Disney, but um, I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm good. Um, yeah, really big sign. Let's see how tall it was. There we go. 122 centimetres, so over a metre long. It was like carved from wood, obviously. Um, 
I would have zoomed in on the wood effect. There you go. So it's like 3D Mickey and Minnie from a bar or restaurant, like ice cold drinks, chalkboard. Uh, paid, I definitely paid £15 for this one, I think. <laughs> no, I can't remember. Um, 15 or 20 no higher than that really. Might have even been a tenner. But um, obviously I've listed it for 175 again. No competition, nothing at all. No history or anything. So aim high, 175 um, it was on there for two or three months maybe done a sale and then I took an offer uh, sign 110 pound uh, this went with parcel force uh, just a quick bit of cardboard that really thick cardboard round it taped it all up bit of a, a shrink wrap as well just to keep it all nice and tight and that went for uh, what if I charged only seven pound postage I think it cost me about eight pounds so I've undercharged there for whatever reason um i don't know why i undercharged uh but yeah only cost eight or nine pounds anyway parcel force we've got the local depot so I just dropped that off got good feedback i believe uh, i don't know where to see that on the website oh details so yeah anything unusual cool and quirky as soon as i saw it i knew i was having it just because if i really like it someone else is bound to like it with deeper pockets than me <laughs> I'll be crazy enough to buy it anyway. It's one of my favourite things to buy actually. Really cool shop signs like used to be in shops or restaurants. Just because they're normally one-offs like this one. Um, see. Yeah, six ninety nine. Yeah, but like I said, didn't cost more than that anyway. Once you know what you're doing. Uh, Mari Deffy deals from America what's the time there was it late afternoon good evening good afternoon <laughs> uh, Andrew's getting banned Facebook drama <laughs> busy moose love the channel thank you yeah lots of new subscribers which is awesome welcome aboard if you are live if you are for the first time let me know but before that let's go on to the next item which is another oh is that uh, no, this one will do. This nice Sony, like sort of professional digital camcorder. Um, this one I was I'm in an R in about buying for ages. I was just holding it and there's people hovering, and I just couldn't make my mind up. I think it was Sam was with me. If you're in Sam, what did I pay for this? I forgot <laughs> again. I'm pretty sure it was thirty five pound. I had to pay up for this. Had no battery, no charger, just there. And the guy was sending loads of electronics and some of it look, looked beaten up. Um, for exam, uh, bought a Freeview box. The hard drive was ripped out. So yeah, uh, obviously I didn't know that to after. But at the time, yeah, £35. I knew it was a really nice camera. Just because it's Sony anyway. But obviously professional. Obviously it, it does not look cheap. <laughs> Don't know what it would have been new. Uh... And again, made in Japan. Yeah, made in Japan. Uh, what I had to do. Um, hang on a second. Turn it down a bit. What I had to do, I took the chance in the end. Just because there was people hovering. And I took the chance, basically. And obviously no charger, no battery. I could have bought them two things. But they, I think they were quite expensive. Or one of them weren't available. So I could do a save search and wait for one to become available. But then I found this little genius invention on Amazon. And it's basically, I don't think I took any more pictures. And obviously I've sent it off now. But it's basically a battery pack, an empty one, that fits in the camera. But you put six AA batteries in. So no need for a charger. All you need is AA batteries, plug it in, and off it goes. And it was fully working. Uh, and if I was smart, I, I think I forgot. But I did test it, obviously. And it's all working really good and I normally take pictures of it working and I didn't do it this time. Still sold. Um, so yeah, there we go. It didn't sell for 225 It sold for 160 Took an offer. This was only listed for a month, month and a half. Um, sales got a bit slow at the end of... No. Where are we? October. Yeah, sales slowed down a bit. So I put everything on best offer. I had a good period of about a month or two with no best offers on. Just took them all off. Just because sales were so good. Uh, sales slowed down. I put best offers on. Get stuff moving. 
get some money in. So yeah, 160 quid from 35, um, plus the postage, which went with USP, I believe. Um, and they got that the other day. Uh, yeah, with cameras, uh, obviously this isn't that older technology. It's mini DV, I believe, if I can find it. Yeah, mini DV. So obviously small cassettes, people still use them like for their home videos or to watch anything on. Yeah, just a nice bit of kit. Again, don't be afraid to pay up for stuff. But then it could have bit me on the bum. But then even for spares and repairs, I might have got my money back. This blooming thing has finally sold. <laughs> Hasn't left yet though. I need to deliver this locally tomorrow. Uh, this was in an early video of mine, if you've been around since then. This was in Southend. I think the girls and they were having a haircut. I went about Southend, went to the tip shop. I uh, found this in a, it wasn't a charity shop, it was like a house. <coughs> it's a house clearance company, but they also have a high street shop. Uh, I paid £100 for this, and plus £20 delivery, so £120. Uh, it's stuck around, I think I didn't list this actually, it took me a little while to list it. Um, what did I list it for? I listed it high again. Uh, and it's stuck around, obviously furniture, I'm trying to get out of furniture. I've got my garage, I took the pictures at the garage. But I'm trying to get rid of that in the new year so I can get a bigger unit so everything's all together at the storage place. Um, took an offer of 200, I wasn't going to accept that, it's obviously only 80 pounds minus fees and everything uh, but I want to get rid of the garage it's sticking around I just want to get rid of it accepted it and tomorrow I'll be delivering it and I'll get 200 pound cash tomorrow so at least I save on the PayPal fee um, and I don't have to faff about with couriers and everything like that even though I might have preferred that because now I've got to lug it in the car <laughs> tie it down um, oh, excuse me oh, knackered so, what to look out for? Obviously, Teak, as I started, just before I started, and when I did start, this market was sort of slow, or not many people knew about it. Now it's red hot. Everyone knows. If I put this in my auction, I could have probably got £200 at my local auction. Like, not even a specialist auction. Um, so, yeah, the market's over flooded, really, or... But vintage is still in fashion. You just got to wait it out, really. The only downside to this one, the corners were a bit scuffed. I'm pointing at the screen. <laughs> corners were scuffed a bit. Obviously, scratches here and there, which slowed it down. Like this is a big one right in the corner. Look at that thing. Uh, but yeah, taking into consideration, I won't be doing that again. <laughs> oh, and we got an offer in. Should we do a live offer? Here we go. Just don't come up with their address or anything, please. I'm not used to this. How do you click on it? <laughs> Stupid thing. All right, and then, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, don't show anyone's address. There we go. Right, 20 pounds, what should we do? Uh, showing everyone's bloody stuff. 35, no. I could make a counter, I'll just decline. That'll do, All right. Two more items. Let's dip back in the chat before we do the last two. <laughs> Stu, I love you down the post office with that cyborg all boxed up. Yeah, uh, I remember when I first started before I'd used parcel to go dot com. Uh, I'd box obviously furniture up. I've sold and boxed up like coffee tables before, like smaller ones, and I'd go to the post office and drop it off with them. You should have seen their faces. It was literally how you're thinking. Um, but obviously, since then, started learning. I've since learned. Obviously, that this was soon after I started that we got parcel for. So I got like every depot, which is quite lucky of me, within like a few minutes drive. But yeah, I was at one point post office, coffee table. Send that, please. <laughs> I already had a label on. <clears throat> a vintage enthusiast, Cheryl. Why do you think I've stopped the furniture? Yeah, it takes a while in storage. I used to love it, that was my passion, like cool mid-century lamps, furniture, chairs, but I haven't gone off it, I just can't be bothered <laughs> for the time, effort, space, it takes longer to sell when I could just buy 
yeah, other things, smaller. They might be still a pain in the bum to pack, but at least it's not furniture and it's going to sell quicker. So that's why I have that one. Uh, didn't. Just wondering how you keep it with the da da. Taxes. Uh, I can show you while I'm live, can't I? I use. I can't show you much because obviously personal details. Let me see what I can show you. But it's the QuickBooks self employed app. I've got a lot of transactions to review. 181 transactions. <laughs> so basically, when I spend online, I'm just making sure you can't see nothing. Uh, and bear with me. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. But it's linked to your bank account. So I paid myself from PayPal. That's gone in as a green, as an income. I swipe left for business income. It's like the swipe right for personal. And it does it from there, really. It just adds it all up automatically. It's really easy. It also has an automatic mileage tracker. I can show you that quick. Uh, I've got 84 trips to review. <laughs> I keep putting it off. But yeah, if you just put your location on your um, phone and just start driving, basically, like here you go. It tracks your journeys, so it knows when you start and stop a journey. So from my house, you can save areas as well to my storage. Uh, here we go. So here, I swipe business. Oh, I should do it while looking. Uh, yeah, business, swipe. And then it just saves it. It automatically works out how far you've driven, works out the petrol. And it just adds it up. It's just so easy. Highly recommend it. Uh, and if you've got my personal details, uh, don't rinse out my bank account, please. <laughs> I need that. Last two. Here we go. This was a good sale. This was on a video because I had to pay up for this one and I forgot what I paid. Again, <laughs> I should be better at this. If you're a devoted watcher, how much did I pay for this? Because <laughs> I nearly went to walk away. I was with Maisie. Oh, hold the phone. We've got another offer, a live offer coming in. Uh, oh, it's quicker on the app than the desktop. There you go. Is it coming in yet? Ah, we'll wait till it comes through. Yeah, uh, off the top of my head, I'm thinking I paid 50 for this one. Oh, here we go. Offer's coming in. Do -do -do -do. Listed for 65. They've offered 50. We're taking that. Boom. And there's another sale. Don't show their address, please. I've got rid of it. No. Oh, what an idiot. Bear with me. <laughs> Where's that sale? There it is. Right, yeah, £50. I was going to walk straight on because it looked cool, but I didn't think it looked that cool. Quickly looked up the, luckily the model number was in bold here. So quickly looked it up and saw they were going for 200 plus, like 180 and onwards. Um, I think he was asking 60, got it for 50. Uh, he showed me a video of it working. So I'm a bit dubious when they show me videos of things working because it could be anything. Or it could be that item from a year ago when it was working. But it came with its adapter. Um, he did show me it working. And it was working. It was working really nice. Got a really cool sound. Uh, yeah, I think it's, yeah from the eighties that proper had like proper eighties soundtrack type sound to it. Uh, I found some details. Yeah, I found loads of details online. I just copied and pasted all its specs. I tend to do that with high end electronics as well. That is a tip actually. I could share right now. Like say if I was listing this now, just. Before or while you're listing it, just quickly whack it into Google and then just simply write in specs. And then normally there's a website that comes up with like the whole details of every item, no matter how old. Is this the website I got it from? But I say this was all the details, just simply copy and paste it, put in a listing, and people are paying up so they know every single detail. You won't be getting all these confusing questions like, does this do that and that? I don't know what's happened here. Uh, yeah, there you go. They just help sell it. Uh, I do that, that sort of item, sort of eighty pound plus. I'll make the time and effort just to put the specs in like that, and it helps, seems to help it shift. And again, was this made in Japan? I wouldn't be surprised if it was, or something similar. 
Made in Japan. Of course it was. And that's that one. Last sale. And I think we all know what it is because I did share it. Is that current current viewers? 154. You mad? 156 people. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Stage fright. Last one. I shared this. If you are following me, obviously on YouTube, I guess you are. Uh, there is a community tab. I put little pictures on of updates like today. Filled the car with cardboard. Just to sort of, yeah, instead of Facebook, I sort of put little updates on the YouTube like community page. And obviously this sale was on there. And this was a very recent video. Obviously last week when I went to Chelmsford Town Centre. I went to the cash converters. <coughs> and this beauty was sitting there for £90. And I've since been told I should haggle in cash converters. I was thinking of it at the time, I was like, do people haggle in here? So I wasn't sure if it was a retail shop. Obviously I find haggling really bloody awkward anyway. Obviously that's one of my weaker points, as people keep reminding me. I'm like, yes I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, £90. Obviously listed it. There, wasn't, there was competition, but it was pickup only competition. So I can just ignore them. I'm prepared to say on this worldwide if I really have to. £15 postage, it was big and heavy. Made a little bit of profit actually, because it was, wasn't as big and heavy as I thought. Uh, obviously 350 uh obviously I only picked it up last week or the week before, and it took an offer of £260. Boom. That was a very welcome sale. That got sent, I think I wrapped that up yesterday, so they would have got that today again. That No, no, that was parcel false, 24 hour. So like nine or ten pounds, they've got it today. Haven't heard anything, but no news is good news. Fingers crossed, touch wood. Um, yeah, just an awesome, awesome sale, especially from like a shop that obviously they use eBay. I'm guessing to price their stuff. So I don't know what they've done wrong there. Someone commented or messaged me saying they saw this exact same model and it was up for like three hundred pound. So I guess they saw my one and <laughs> priced it based on that. But it's Allen and Heath, which apparently is a good name, I've since learnt. PA12, mixing system. So obviously live music or theatre, I guess. Uh, you can change all the different sounds and stuff. I'm not really sure. Um, plugged it in, it all lit up, made all the right sort of sounds and stuff. I couldn't fully test it. Obviously I haven't got a music studio. But uh, And again with cash converters, like in my video, she said uh, six months, like, warranty I guess it is so if one part of this isn't working say this knob isn't working and they return it I can then return it if I really want to cash from there to cash converters and get my money back but I think even if it was say faulty like that I could still make profit on a faulty one like spares or repairs or if they really don't need this knob for example or this microphone or whatever it is lead doesn't work but all the rest do you still get good money Kevin would have held out for more. Um, maybe I am known to hold out there. I'm known to hold out for more, but I wanted 260 quid, mate. <laughs> I'm taking it, and I'm uh, spending my money again on other stuff. Uh, is there anything else to say? Nope. I think that's it. There we go. Let's transfer. Oh, wait a minute. Zzzz. Behind the scenes action, there we go. 10 items that sell for £100 with postage and above. There we go, what do you think? That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> um, uh, let's just see if there's any questions. Uh, Steve stole, stole? <laughs> Steve sold a keyboard the other day. Lost out as the buyer selected click and collect. Oh no, uh, but the collect refused to accept it as it was over 90 cents, oh, yeah. I've had one of them before with Argos click and collect. There is actually a, I don't know if there's a weight restriction, there probably is, but there is also a height restriction. I sold a, uh, was it a key? I think it was a keyboard or a sign and they refused it because it was like 10 centimeters over. I think if you just get a picky person on that day, they return it, which is a right pain in the bum. Um, so yeah, just be aware, uh, Argos Click and Collect, they do have restrictions and they will refuse it if you get the wrong person. Uh, da, da, da. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so that's that. 
thanks for watching goodbye <laughs> no um what did i say the raffle prizes uh i should have prepared this maybe i'll do it tomorrow hmm so i've got people i've had selfies from winners and losers that got the bolos and no nos so uh, i'll probably do that tomorrow because next news the charity raffle no the charity skydive raffle's gone that's been and gone old news weather is looking good i can check the website while i'm live now just to double check but i've been checking all week i found on their actual website the skydiving website they have an actual weather like traffic light thing red i'm very unlikely to skydive yellow obviously medium and then greens like highly likely to skydive while i'm talking to you now saturday if it was tomorrow this is what i'm seeing you can see that tomorrow or see the wind last time it was uh cancelled because of the wind speed i think the legal limit like safety limit is 23 miles an hour so i say tomorrow friday it's going to be 26 and also it has to be clear like cloud cover and stuff i guess <laughs> and it's improved since i've last seen it which just makes me nervous saturday the wind pure greens are at 16 miles an hour and 13 and uh, cloud coverage yellow which i guess is fine ah uh, so it's looking like i oh know wind speed nine gusts 16 so even if a gust came it's still a green it's just the cloud cover so it looks like this saturday it's on i'll be jumping out of a plane at fifteen thousand feet and if you did want to come this was the details Peter reminded me about live streaming and also if people, I think someone said they were going to come. If you do want to come, you're more than welcome. Uh, details on the website. There is like a cafe that does obviously food and drink, but there's not a lot else. That's the only thing. So if you do come, it's a bit of a wait. So I think I have to get there. They open at half seven in the morning or seven in the morning on Saturday. I'm going to get there for about half six because it's first come first serve and there's quite a lot of people. And they do flights of 10 people. So if there's 80 flight um, jumpers that day, if you get there late, you're going to be in the last one. You're going to be there till like 6 in the uh, evening. And you're there at 7 in the morning. But um, yeah, if you want to come, it's North London Skydiving Centre. Uh, trying to think of a time. It's obviously don't want you bored if you do come. Uh, probably midday if you did want to come. Obviously, they have a sandwich. Spectators are allowed. Just They did say, just a warning, there's not a lot to do. There's nothing to do, really. Uh, pets are allowed. Buddy's coming. You can meet Buddy. Oh, hey. Do you want to come, Bud? He's asleep at the moment. Um, yeah. Um, live streaming. Uh, that was the other thing. On the terms and conditions. Sorry if I'm blabbing on. Uh, I can't use my own camera when jumping out of the plane. Uh, you have to have like a level three skydiving certificate basically and you have to do over 80 jumps or 200 jumps so not like to have your own camera equipment so i can't film from my angle but i will be hiring the i think the guy that i'm attached to he has a gopro on his hand and then also you can hire a third guy or a second guy and he jumps out just before you so i'll be doing that putting them together um as for live streaming uh, I'll probably go live because we're going to the hotel tomorrow. It's like an hour and a half drive, nearly two hours from us. So when we've got to be at like half six, we just yeah, there's a nearby hotel. I'll probably live stream tomorrow, like in prepare preparation, try and raise a bit more money. Uh, obviously on the morning, if we're waiting around, I'll probably live stream from my phone or from I can't do it from my iPad. Um, yeah, I'll live stream from my phone <coughs> in build up. If you come, be good to see you. Um, yeah, let's do this. I'm not as nervous as last time, but I probably will be in the morning. Because <laughs> tomorrow we'll be in the hotel, this time tomorrow. And it will be real. Uh, yeah, I think that's that. I'll leave this one here. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I saw there's a new subscriber watching. Uh, Kevin, I think his name was. I've lost it now. But yeah. Thanks for the new dis uh, yeah. 
This is why I don't go live very often. I get my words mixed up. Thanks to all the new subscribers and all the loyal ones since the beginning. Almost been a year. I started in January this year. It was my New Year's resolution to start YouTube. I'm still going strong. Hit four and a half thousand today, which is awesome. Uh, and yeah, thanks so much. Uh, I'll try and film a video tomorrow, but I can't promise it. But I will be vlogging the skydive. If you want to make a donation, obviously still welcoming them. I haven't had any for a few days, obviously, because of the delay. Links in the description, Mind UK and Great Ormond Street. Anything you can give, minimum donation of £2 or yeah. Anything is great, greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.